guys, Josh with the Proud Productions. We're doing a third tutorial with blueprints today in the Unreal Engine 4. We're going to talk about trigger boxes. That's right. We're going to learn some trigger box tricks. A couple things with trigger boxes. What a trigger box is, is a box that you can't really see in the game that we can actually affect if something overlaps it or touches it or certain things. Check it out. I'm in the world here. I'm in a little, little world here. It looks all cool from far away, but if you get too close, it's real, real pixelated. My bad. You can go over here to little, little tabs here, right? Go to volumes, right? You can go scroll all the way down to trigger volume here. You can drag it in. You can see a little green box. It's a little box, and you could actually have things happen if something went through it. You go into your level blueprint and do whatever and, and function, whatever or not. Now, me, I'm over here in this little corner. So I got the first person project still kind of open. So if I F11 to full screen and all P to play, I can go over where I don't see no box. But if I escape, oh, it's there. We got a box. We just can't see it, even though we can see it. F11, I'll click on the old box, and if I can if I can select it and delete it by pressing the delete key, we're going to actually create a blueprint instead and put a trigger box inside of our blueprint. So check it out. Uh, we got the content. I got my DP folder right here, but it's all empty. Can't have an empty DP. Let's go over here to the starter content. Hopefully you have that applied to your project, and you can scroll down to shapes here and then go to shape cube. Now what's cool is I can drag it over here into my DP copy here. Now if I go to the DP folder, I got my shape cube. I can right click and rename it. We'll go my underscore box. And then I've got my box. I got it's it's my box and you can have one too. And but what we need a we need a blueprint. So it's right click here in the empty space. Go to blueprint class actor and we'll name this my underscore box underscore BP for blueprint. There we go. We got our box and we got the blueprint. Um, we're good to go. Double click on BP. I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here. You know how I do. I've said that like 45 times. Um, we need to add a component, right? And we need it to be a static mesh named box because that's exactly what it is. Compile. We'll go right here. Grab the box. Hold on to it. Don't be scared. Drag it right here. Hold it. Wait, 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 wait. Boom. There she is. I want a big old box because I like them big. I like them big. I like them big. Uh, scale. See the scale over here? The box is selected. Set it to 15 because we are not scared. Be as big as you want. Go back. Now what's cool is I can pull back here. I see my see where I'm at right here. Pull the old box BP in here. See how big it is. It's large. Drag it up like that. Looks good to me. You can go back. And now we need to create our collision. Let's add another component. We need this trigger box we've been talking about. Talking about trigger boxes. See this box collision right here? we we'll name it Trigger. Collision box, named it Trigger, compile. In other words, one thing. Grab this, drag it over the box, and let go of it there. It was attached to the box. Don't want it to be. Now, if it's selected, the trigger, it's got its scale, which is set to 90. You're like, whoa, bro, you should calm down. It's awful, awful big. Just check it out, compile. Now, if you go back, you can see the box, how big it is. Yeah, it goes to the floor. I don't care. You care? Good. But, I mean, you know, we can see. You can see that if I take just a few steps, I'll be walking through this box. So, we're going to make stuff happen. If I walk through the box, so go back. Now, if you were in the trigger, you'd need to scroll down and set your collision possibly a certain way, depending on what you want to be able to overlap it, ignore it, block it, see what's going on there, different type of collisions. But if you don't touch anything, it's fine for the purpose of this tutorial. So go to the event graph and delete all this. Drag a box, press delete. So let's think about what we want to do. We want something to happen if we overlap this thing, the trigger. So right click, add event, on component begin overlap. That sounds like exactly what we need. And you're like, help, there's a bunch of buttons. Don't be scared. Just drag a wire off other actor, and we need to cast to whatever is playing the game. So if you have a certain blueprint you're using, that's fine. Well, we're using in this project first person player. No, first person character. So I drag a wire and type cast to first person character, and there it is. Boom. You got the execution wire in there, and then it's asking which actor is overlapping, and you're telling it it is us. So it has to be us for it to even work. So let's compile, and what do we want to do? We want to rotate our box. We got a lot to do to do that, right? You're like, how do we do that? Guys, we're about to cover a bunch of stuff we never have, so just get ready, hold on tight. Right click and type in timeline, okay? Name it, rotate, okay? I don't know if I spelled that right or not, probably not. Drag a wire from here to play from start. Don't worry about all this, it's freaking you out, just calm down, but play from start. It's basically this timeline is a, a moment in time, an amount of time that we can make things change or move or whatever we want. So let's double click on it, okay? It has its length right here, we'll set it to four seconds. So there we go. Now it's asking for a type of track right here. This is float, this is vector. Click on the first one for a float track. We'll name it rotate. You're like, I do not understand what we're doing. We're only gonna change one value because we're actually going to lerp over this value. You're like, what? Lerps? I thought that was with materials. Well, get ready, we're about to lerp everything. Shift and click right here. Don't be scared, creates a little keyframe. Time's gonna be zero. Value's gonna be zero. Problem solved. Shift click again. Let's max out that time length. Four, 
for the time. And we'll, what do we do when we LARP? Zero, two, one. Alpha style. We can scroll out and see what we got going on here. You can press these two things right here. Click, click. And you get this little uh, zooms right in there for you. We'll compile. And then we got a little tab here for our timeline. Go back to the event graph right here. Now, that little, little track we made called rotate is right there. We need to LARP with this value over what? The, the rotation of this box. See me drag it in there? I'm not scared to drag it. Drag a box, drag a wire from the box. I want you to type set world rotation. There it is. So plug this in. What we wanna do, we wanna update. See update? Execution all day. Now we see we need to change the rotation, but we need the rotation to be what's going on here. And this needs to lurk between two rotations. Well, first thing we need is this box's initial rotation where the game started. We need a variable. Check out what I do here. Right click, event begin. Oh, oh, oh. Type, we're gonna type in event begin play. And I know, I know if we've we've used this one before, I think, in the old uh, old tutorials. So let's go to compile. I always compile, <laughs> just keep compiling. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drag in the box. Okay. We need to we set the world rotation earlier. We're gonna get it right here. Get world rotation. And what I want to do is I'm gonna right click from this thing right here, this output. Promote to variable. There it is. Drag it right here and just plug it in. So this variable, a variable can be anything. It's a, it, this value, whatever this value is, I'm gonna double click it here and name it box IR, which means initial rotation. So at the beginning of the game, I'm just creating a variable based off of this rotation and saying, I want this, I want this value and I wanna keep it and I can use it anytime I want. Boom, it's just saving it. It has been stored. And now what we can do is, check us out. Drag a little, make a little room, drag a, drag a wire. What are we trying to do? We're trying to lerp rotation, right? It's exactly what we're going to type in almost. Lerp rotator. You know what I'm talking about? Boom. We need two rotators. We need two of them. Lerp between them. There's the alpha. Well, let's grab this guy and just drag him in. Oh, wait, wait. Drag it in. There it is. And we'll, oh, I didn't do it right. How ain't going to do it right? Get. You got to get it. Plug it in there. And what we need B to be is we need to start here and end at the same rotation, but adding 90 on the Z. So I need to combine Combine rotators, you see that? And plug that into the second one here. And then go to the Z axis here and type in the uh, type in 90 there. And then make sure we plug this into our final node here. Boom, we got this set up here, looking good. I know that was a lot, guys. I apologize if I scared you away, compile. Go back to the window, now check it out. I'm gonna Alt-P to play, F11, full screen Alt-P, and if I walk through there, it should start rotating. Get ready. Oh yes, a giant rotating square. I can back out. It stopped after our 90 degrees. I can go back in. Does it again. Well, think about that, though. I'm walking out. Okay. I'm walking in. Out. In. Oh, uh-oh. You see that bug? We got bug time. Don't Just relax a little bit. Go back. F11. Got to think about that. We can't just keep walking through that box while it's doing something over that four seconds. Check this out. This is the easy way. Grab the trigger. Drag it in here. There's our trigger box. I'm going to drag a wire and type in destroy component. So think about what's going on there. I'm gonna just connect that there and connect this to play from start. Zooming way in there, cause I can't see nothing. So now what's it saying is, you're gonna overlap the trigger, it's gonna check to see if it's us, then it's gonna destroy the trigger, then it's gonna play this timeline. And then you're like, well if I walk into it again, it can't walk into it again because it's gone. <laughs> so compile, go back, F11 full screen, all P to play, and now we can run in there, boom, it's, I can just walk in and out of this trigger box, do you know why? Cause there isn't a trigger box anymore, it's gone. So it just stuck, but now it don't move no more. It's kind of boring, right? I'll show you one more cool thing we can do with these trigger box tricks. Sun, escape, F11, go back here. I want you to grab all of this, all that, and delete. And I want you to grab all this and press delete. And delete this trash here too, this bo box IR variable. I'm gonna show you one more thing about variables since we've already touched on them. Think about this. If we overlap the trigger, what happens now? I'm gonna create a variable, and it's a red one, and that stands for a Boolean. And I'm gonna name it rotating, there we go. So I've got this Boolean variable, which means it's a true or false variable, or a switch. And I'm gonna go over here, drag it in, or click set, okay, and plug that in there. And all this is a check mark. It's basically saying on or off. So basically, think about that. If we go in, I want this switch rotating to be on. You're like, well what? Who cares if it's on? What's even happening? Like, what's happening? Exactly. We have to make something happen that calls for this variable. So check this out. Right click here, and let's go to event tick. Now, 
I wouldn't recommend using this very much. I know we used it before, but I wouldn't recommend using it a lot. It's hard on your computer. But this is just for the purpose of this video. So just, just enjoy. Event tick, you know what it does though. Every frame, what are we gonna do? Drag this rotating variable out, this Boolean we created. Drag a wire from it and type if, I F. And we got a branch. You're like, oh, what's, what's going on there? Now what's going on is it says, it's basically saying every tick, it's gonna check and see if rotating is on. If it's false, we're not gonna do nothing. But if it is true, what are we gonna do? Check this out, grab the box, drag it in. I want you to drag a wire from it and type in add. Wait, 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 wait. Add local rotation. You're like, whoa, what's going on there, bro? Drag this into true. And I want you to set the Z to 0.5 because it's gonna be happening every frame. So basically think about what's going on there. Once we enter the trigger box, it's gonna turn rotating on. And once rotating is turned on, this event tick is no longer gonna be false. It's gonna start working. It's already compiled, go back, F11 full screen, all P to play, walk in there, boom. We got a rotating cube and it's rotating. Oh yeah. See, and now it just keeps on rotating. But wouldn't it be cool if we walked out of the trigger box and it stopped? You read my mind. Escape, go back, go back. Uh, check this out. We got this one right here. This one right about right here and go back to the trigger, right click, add event on end, overlap. I'm gonna do it easy. Grab these two, control C, control V, plug them in where they're supposed to be plugged in, other actor. So again, if it ends and it's this person, we're gonna turn it off. Oh yeah, we're gonna turn it off. You ever been turned off? Me too. Now, what's going on and saying now is basically we can go in, it'll rotate, we can walk out and it'll stop. Check it out. We walk in there, it's rotating. I walk out, up, oh, nothing. Walk in, walk out. In and out, baby. Don't be scared of that. I could escape F11, go back in here and set this to like five. Multiply that by literally a bunch. So now it's going literally 10 times as fast. And walk in here and be like, boom, now we got this freaking crazy ass twisting giant cube and it just stops. Guys, man, I appreciate y'all watching. I'm a little confused. I'm getting a little dizzy. I ain't gonna lie. This is kind of scary. A lot to learn about trigger boxes. I ain't gonna stare at this too long. Uh, please go hit the subscribe or go subscribe to the Deprived Productions YouTube channel for me, please. Man, we love you guys. We're having a blast. All kind of cool stuff going on. I'm not gonna watch this anymore. We are turning away. But guys, seriously, um, and the Facebook page, man, Deprived Productions, do do it up. Let's do stuff with boxes together. I got all kind of stuff and we're going to, oh, nope, nope, no, I'm not doing it. Um, but yeah, seriously, guys, check us out. I appreciate y'all watching. Love you. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. I will help you everywhere I can. Just holler at me in the, in the Deprived Productions Facebook messaging center place or whatever they call it these days. But either way, love you, miss you. See you next time. Peace.